All right, what is good, YouTube? It is your boy Kos, and I'm uh, I'm back again to to this time talk about Captain Marvel and Marvel fans um, and what they're going through right now. So, in case you haven't seen uh, well the news lately concerning Captain Marvel, there's been a lot of talk that Captain Marvel would uh, face stiff competition. Um, versus films like Battle Angel Alita and uh, some of the other new flicks coming out. But um, Disney, <laughs> being wise, was like, they can't compete if there are no other movies in the theater. Oh my God, man. Like, who would honestly sell their company to Disney or, or any kind of property to Disney, like judging by by how this company has been acting lately. So anyway, to delve into the into this absolute madness, uh, Disney is basically censoring uh, opinion on Captain Marvel <laughs> in the fan opinion on on the film. And I, I find myself in just a complete and utter disbelief. But then again, I think, well, then again, this is Disney. Um, what wouldn't they do to get an edge? Uh, what wouldn't they do? And I freaking hate it. I mean, I, I despise what Disney's become. So the news first broke yesterday, uh, and, but I didn't really have time to make a video. So that's why I'm making a video now. <laughs> where Memology 101, his channel, you should check it out if you get the chance. Uh, his channel basically had a had a video about uh, the Captain Marvel film after Jeremy from uh, Geeks and Gamers and a whole world class bullshitters. They've all been tearing this film to shreds, especially after Brie Larson came out with that SJW rant, like, oh, this film isn't for white men, this isn't for white people, you know, and I'm just like, how can you say that? Like, you you realize you're alienating your audience, you know, you realize that, that you're white, <laughs> like, you're white. It doesn't make any sense when these white, these white people hating hating themselves are, to me are like the white versions of of like Uncle Ruckus or something like that. You know, it, it's amazing. <laughs> but um, everyone's been ripping this movie a new one, saying this is why this movie would fail. This is why, uh, you know. Breed Larson shouldn't have alienated her audience, and the fans are, are rightfully pissed, you know, because when Star Wars was doing the same thing, you know, people were talking about that, and Disney tried the same crap where they tried to say, oh, we were all just Russian bots that were, were fake people online, but when we call them NPCs, then they all get mad, and they want to throw a, a little bitch fit about it, you know, but um, anyway, let, let me show you some of the video from Memology 101. Uh, which basically was like, yo, Disney is just going to make Captain Marvel the only movie in the theater. So you can't see anything else, <laughs> which is hilarious to me that this movie is, is apparently so great that it can't it's, that it can't compete with other movies in the theater. It's hilarious. Captain Marvel will be the only movie playing in several theaters. Jesus. <laughs> Some people were saying that movie theaters have been paid to only play Captain Marvel on the 7th. So I checked and it's actually fucking true. <laughs> Captain Marvel is so revolutionary. It changed the Rotten Tomatoes scoring system and the first Marvel movie to need a handicap unbelievable i mean and, and and that's the thing like i remember way back when uh amy schumer came out with uh with that video oh man i forget what it's called her uh comedy stint or quote-unquote comedy stint uh that had to change rotten tomatoes metrics 
Rotten Tomato had to, had to change its its rating system because everyone was just bombing the crap out of it. Yeah, and this film, uh, they had to they had to Rotten Tomatoes, the supposedly most ob- objective movie reviewing site, had to change its um, its metrics just so just so this movie could stand a chance in the theaters. But why, you ask? Why would they uh, possibly be sticking their necks out for for Disney and Marvel? Um, Why would they go go through such lengths to, uh, I don't know, uh, show for this company to make sure it does well in theaters? Uh, Well, the answer might surprise you. (laughs) But... I've learned that apparently uh, some one of the higher well since Rotten Tomatoes is owned by Fandango and uh, Fandango's president basically used to be a Disney employee uh, and I'm not making this up I did not know until I just found out not long ago but um, basically. Fandango in, I believe, 2012 hired uh, a Disney executive, former Disney executive, Paul Yanover. So, I mean, the fact that Rotten Tomatoes slash Disney um, shills for... (laughs) And people suspected this. People were suspecting that all these movie reviews, all these good movie reviews for Marvel movies and all these bad bad movie reviews for... for DC movies um, was a result of this. Was a result of Disney just paying off, paying off critics uh, to shill for their film. This is why, this is why Rotten Tomatoes is, is trying to protect this film. This is why. Um, And you can say, oh yes, they have, they have no, they have no reason to to show for Disney, really. I mean, other than Paul's former ties. But really, though, like you got you got to think critically, man. I mean, you know, there, there there is a possibility that 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 could be the case. That he's just shilling for them because, oh yes, I, uh, you know, I got I got to show for my for my boys over at Disney, you know, and, and protect their protect their movie, their investment. Make sure these these fools go and see it. I'll drop all positive reviews, like. Yeah, and, and when when the fan, when the audience and the actual, uh, I mean, the supposed objective crick uh, movie reviews differ <laughs> so much that you that it just seems really suspicious. I mean, you know that that something is up. I mean, it's almost almost as bad as uh, freaking the Last Jedi. They have to they have to boost. Imagine, <laughs> just imagine a company cheerleading for itself. Yeah, that's basically what Disney has done with this film and and, and with the Last Jedi. <clears throat> no, but people say, saying there's a huge conspiracy. Uh, you know, to, to within within Hollywood or within these these uh, within journalism that there's dishonesty in journalism. Oh no, no, they're just sexist, racist, misogynist, phobes, whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all just misogynists. We're all just you know phobes or whatever. I mean, after some some chick comes out and says uh, this movie isn't for white people, like really don't get it, don't be surprised when <laughs> when this tanks. Don't be surprised. I mean, like, oh yeah, Rotten Tomatoes revamp could save Captain Marvel. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. That's why they they messed up. Their, that's why they changed their entire system. So that it could save the review of Captain Marvel, so that it wouldn't look like absolute crap. But yeah, they don't hear us.
Wow. All Captain Marvel, all the time. <laughs> all these big media corporations, um, just how, how pathetic must you be that you actually have to rig the game because people don't like you? You actually have to rig the game so that you win because people want you to fail so badly. That's absolutely pathetic. And um, it, it infuriates me. I mean, stuff like this is exactly why Gamergate happened. This is why people are so concerned about journalistic integrity. This is why people are so concerned about fake news media. This is why in this day and age, people are calling out these, these big media companies, these big tech companies for censorship because no one else can. Yeah. The fans, uh, the, the viewers or the audience must hold these clowns accountable because no one else can. That's why when Ga Gamergate, I feel like was the whole start of this whole, this whole, uh, this whole thing. And thank God for it. People sh show that people finally were starting to wake up to, to just how rigged everything was. And now it's, it's just evolved way past then. Um, we want integrity for journalism. And, you know, of course they may smear us, they may do whatever. But um, the fact that uh, this is happening and just proves how right we were. And now I'm just really, really hoping that it bombs because people just, or at least doesn't do as great as expected because this is, you know, this is ridiculous. And people don't, don't realize that the conspiracy is real. All these people who, who call you conspiracy theorists, they're trying to put the blinders back on you. They're trying to, uh, to dismiss us, to dismiss real criticism. Whenever you want to dismiss real criticism, you just dub someone a crazy conspiracy theorist. Oh, they're out of their minds. Yes, they're, they're, they're always out of their minds until they're proven correct. Uh, and that's what I've learned. Look at Alex Jones. I mean, like, you know, as, as nutty as he was, he's still right on a lot of issues. Uh, you know, and it, it's... It's really crazy. I mean, it's really crazy how they just dismiss us. They don't care. You know, they really, they really dismiss our criticisms. Yeah. And uh, if Brie Larson really wanted, really wanted to not alienate her fans, long-term fans, who I know are all, we're all those, those little white boys in their, <laughs> in their basements. Like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, who, who are really just, uh, you know, nerdy comic fans. Um, and, you know, a, a large portion of which were probably white. I mean, <laughs> if you didn't want to alienate your audience, then like, you shouldn't have said what you said. And I, I've read about it, how she said like, oh yeah, this film isn't for like white men or like blah, blah, blah. So it's not, it's not our fault that this movie tanks, it's your fault. You have no one else to look at but yourself. All right, it's your boy Kos, uh, and I'm gonna leave you with a little meme that that I think that perfectly summarizes this film uh, and Disney's Disney's efforts. It's just ridiculous, man. All right, peace out.